So I remember when I was first learning um, HTML and CSS and JavaScript, uh, I would be able to work in places like CodePen. I, I did this for a while, um, where I'd write my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and it would it would work. But I didn't know how to like set it up myself in in the text editor and stuff like that. And I remember I would have to Google for things, and I would copy and paste code like this, code that looks like this, and I wouldn't know what it would mean, I wouldn't know how it would work, but I just knew this was part of my, my setup process. Um, and I would be copy and pasting like this. It reminds me of uh, back in college when I would take classes with Java, I would do public static void main, whatever, and it was just something I would do to, to before I needed to code. Uh, I didn't know what it did or how it worked, but I would just do it, and it's similar to this. So let me copy and paste my code from CodePen in quickly. I've um, got the HTML. Get the CSS. And get the JavaScript. So, yeah, I would always have to copy and paste before I would get started. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get started yourself, and I'm going to explain, you know, what's happening. So to do this, let me go through a trace of what I've got here. Um, okay, so I'm going to do this. Um, what's happening here? Well, let's see. I've got my client, I've got my server, and my server has these three files. Um, it's got test.html, test.css, and test.js. And I started off by sending a request to test.html. Oh, I'm sorry, a request to my server for test.html. And it's going to respond with test.html. Let's look at that. Let me do this. No, good. OK, so request is going out to test.html, and it responds with the HTML that I wrote. You can see this, this here is the same as what I've got in my browser, in my, in my editor. Okay, and as we know, browsers, um, they, they run and interpret and render HTML for you. So your browser is literally going to go through this line by line. Um, line one, line two, don't really do anything. But it's going to hit line three, and your browser is going to see a link tag with a relic style sheet, an href of test.css, and it's going to say, OK, I'm going to send a get request out for test.css. That's what I do when I see this. So as you can see, that's what's happening here. A get request for test.css. And because our server has test.css, um, a request goes out. It's going to respond with test.css, like I've got here. OK. That happened, um, and I should note that. Um, so when it hit line three, it paused. Uh, it paused here. It sent the request out and waited for the response. When the response came back, then it continued. So the response comes back. Then it goes to line four. Sees line four. Says, "What do I do here?" What it does here is it sends a get request out for test.js. And as you can see, get request for test.js. Let's do that here. Request goes out, response comes back. OK. And the response is this code that we wrote. Cool. OK. Back to the HTML. Um, once the response came, came back, it's going to continue. Line 5, line 6. Line 7, it's going to render the P. Line 9, it's going to render the button. Then it's going to finish. So, cool. Let's see. This should this should have worked, right? 
well, we see the foo, we see the button, foo is red, the CSS worked, let's see if the JavaScript worked. No, the JavaScript doesn't seem to be working. Um, I tried to uh, set an onClick method to alert hi after this button is clicked. And let's see, document get element by ID. Um, yeah, why isn't this working? Well, <laughs> one thing I actually I messed up, it's looking for foo when the button is actually named say hi, I think. So let's fix that. Because that's not really. Um, yeah. Let's see if that fixes it. Trying to click. No, it still doesn't work. Why is that? Hmm. Well, I'll show you what happened here. Um, okay. So, on line four, um, what, uh, so the request goes out, response comes back. The response is going to be this JavaScript code, and your browser um, has this thing called V8, which is a JavaScript environment that runs JavaScript code. This is JavaScript code. And it's going to run this code, and it's going to try to get the element with an ID of say hi. And it's actually going to fail to do this. And you can see in the console, um, it says cannot set property on a click of null. So back here, um, it's saying that this right here is null. And the reason for that is because um, it couldn't find an element with an ID of say hi. And you're probably thinking, like, why is that? Um, I have this element, uh, sorry, this element right here with an ID of say hi. Why is it saying that it didn't find it? Um, and I'll tell you, the, the reason for that is because when this is running, this stuff all here, everything beneath it doesn't exist yet. Um, the request went out, the response and came back, it's running through the JavaScript code interpreting it, but things are paused at this point, so none of this happened yet. And the JavaScript code is trying to look for an element of an ID, say hi, before it exists. So that's the problem. And yeah, the solution to that I'll show you is to change the order that things get executed. So if we um, tell it to render these elements before running the JavaScript, when the JavaScript runs, this is going to exist, so it's going to work. And I'll show you that. Cool. There we go. Um, so hopefully you understand now how um, HTML quote-unquote gets linked up quote-unquote with, with CSS and with JavaScript. Um, what you do is you you have to use these link and script tags to send a request to the server. Um, you know, the server has to have the files, and it responds with them. And when it responds with them, the browser, uh, you know, it executes them and it runs them. So your job basically is to just send the request with these tags. And obviously you have to keep in mind to if your if your JavaScript is trying to use these DOM elements, you have to put the they have to be available, so you have to put the script tag beneath it. And um, that actually isn't always true. So you may have actually seen people do this and have things work and wonder how does that happen? And the answer to to that question is because people will wrap their JavaScript in something like this. Document dot add event listener um, DOM content loaded. And they just put everything inside of this thing. And you know, you could think of it as just magic, it makes things work. But let's actually think about what happens here. So let's go through a trace, a new trace. First, I'll just prove to you that it worked. Um, yeah. 
So previously we had the script tag in the head and it didn't work because it was trying to get this thing that doesn't exist yet. And now it's working. So why is that? So, okay, request goes out for HTML, response comes back, browser runs through, CSS does its thing, sends a request out for this JavaScript file. Let's look at that. Request goes out, response comes back, the browser, the V8, um, runs through the JavaScript code, and it um, has the document object that's part of the environment, and it's calling this function called add event listener. It's passing in DOM content loaded as the first argument, and it's passing this callback function in as the second argument. And it's going to know to to listen for a DOM content loaded event, and when that happens, run this callback function. And that's it. So back to our JavaScript, that's all that happened here. And things are going to continue. Uh, because the JavaScript uh, finished executing. So, line 7, ptag does its thing, button does its thing, and this is the key point. So, after this right here, all these DOM elements have been loaded already. So, the browser is going to trigger an event called DOM content loaded. All these DOM content things have been loaded. And we already set up a listener for that event. Uh, and to run this function when that happens. So the next thing that happens is it's gonna look for an, an element with an ID of say hi and register the onClick method. And that's gonna work because the say hi element has been loaded already. So then when, when we go to click it, the alert box pops up. So this is a way to um, if you think it looks a little cleaner to have your script tag up here in the head to be able to do that, because if you don't listen for the dump content loaded event, you won't be able to do that. So if you don't want to use the dump content loaded event, you have to put your script tag uh, below all your HTML.